This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So an interesting law situation came up yesterday that I wanted to make a little story on. Okay. The G2A owner or CEO or whoever it was that said that they would pay 10 times the chargebacks that developers suffered. Mm. I think I'm, I'm gonna call it out as an empty promise. Like others, of course, have called it out as an empty promise, but I mean, I think I have a legal reason, actually a couple legal reasons, to say yeah. that the promise will never be fulfilled and there is no, it's not a binding legal promise. Does that sound interesting to talk about? I don't understand what, so he said what? So, do you know what the G2A situation is? No. Okay. So, G2A is one of those key selling websites. Yep. And the, one of the problems with the key selling websites is that sometimes keys are leaked, sometimes keys are bought, like with, with like in bulk with credit cards or something, and then the credit card turns out to be stolen or something. And then those keys have been already been sold on G2A. So what's what is a dev to do? A dev isn't exactly going to to turn off those keys because that would upset customers who think they legitimately bought a game. But then the dev is left with no sale because the credit cards got charged back or whatever, and they have to pay for the chargeback. I'm not exactly sure how exactly what it is about the way keys getting distributed that makes them susceptible to this like where do these extra keys come from good shot and i have some questions and all that but my understanding is that the developers themselves are not the people putting their games for sale on g2a rather right. it's individuals and some uh, you know people who are attempting commercial resale maybe even quite successfully through G2A through the website so there's no yeah. contractual relationship that I can find that I know of with these developers good shot thank you So without a contractual relationship, we need to look for some kind of reliance on the promise. If I promise you, you, if you move across the country, I will pay for your moving costs. And then you get here and I'm not willing to reimburse you for your moving costs. Well, you've relied on that promise. So yeah. that's one of the major ways that we could get some, this promise turned into some kind of binding promise or agreement. So where is the reliance? And I don't see it. The, the developers so you're saying that because don't the developers do something don't differently. It. Like, what are the developers doing differently? Are they changing their behavior in some financially measurable way because of that promise that G2A made to reimburse them ten times what they what they were charged back? Well, they might not be changing their behavior, but then that's also a decision. Right, oh, but fuck. that's not reliance. That's not that's not reliance, and then that's not what we would call detrimental reliance, where you're injured by that reliance. And so, oh. I really can't make that argument. Good shot. And so, what if they can prove that they were going to change the way things were done, and then the announcement? And it, made, it has like, to be to oh, their detriment. It, based on their reliance, their reliance has to be reasonable. Okay. If all of that lines up, uh, then we have to also measure damages or measure what the monetary amount of reliance was. The easy situation, I'm gonna keep using Kaylee's move as an example. If Kaylee moves to Luxembourg and they promise that they're gonna pay for her apartment or something and then she gets there and they don't pay for her apartment, which is, this is just a hypothetical. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. Um, but if that was, if, hypothetically, if that happened, then there would be some kind of legal claim there, whether she pursued it or not and all the practicalities around that. Yeah, there's, there's, there's other discussions, but. The point is, is that she would have relied. Or you could argue that there's some kind of contract 
You could argue instead of reliance, it's it's contractual. They made a promise. Somehow that promise is a binding contract. Well, what do you need for a contract? It needs to be a two-way bargained for agreement. There has to be consideration on both sides. Consideration has to be some kind of financial gain of some kind or something like that. It, does, it, it doesn't need to be much. It needs to be a dollar or something. It doesn't need to be even a dollar. It needs to be a mere peppercorn is the United States definition of it. And where is that here? Where is the mere peppercorn of contractual relationship between the developers and the person at GSA. There is no contractual relationship, so you can't call it a binding contract. It is at most a promise that if if someone found a way to rely on the promise, maybe they could they could go after G2A for having said that they would reimburse ten times. And if I was a judge, I would I, mean, I would want to I would want to give you the ten times, uh, but you'd have to show me where you relied in some way on that promise you continued selling your game or allowing keys or you didn't take step maybe you didn't take steps to protect your game from g2a sales or something i'm sure that a clever lawyer will be able to figure out an argument but a clear argument would be if there was actual measurable financial reliance on it mm. yeah so I'm I'm hesitant to say oh, we're still searching. I'm hesitant to say that that the promise to reimburse 10 times the chargebacks is anything more than an empty promise at at best so far without anyone detrimentally relying or without anyone showing a contract which could still happen uh, the, at best it would be nice if he followed through on the promise but that's really all we've got is a non-binding promise. Yeah, I think. You know, just one thing about G2A, like, I've been literally telling people for years not to buy things on it, even including you, which you still did. And now, it's really hard, people, though. And I'm like, it's been years, like, that we know, like, I mean, they even at one point, you could buy insurance in case your key gets revoked. And I'm like, what side needs to give you the option to buy, pay extra to get an insurance? In case your key get revoked, like that's already just shady as fuck. That was like maybe about three, four years ago that they done that, and now it's finally they're getting properly called out for the shit. Well, off. it's hard though. People like me who wants to buy a game but doesn't really have the money to do it. Well, it's like I feel you because I've been in that situation. My bad. Like, I tried to clear it. But I rather than spend my money on a secure thing than. Spending my money and losing it. But I feel like I'm not part of the problem, you know? Yeah, I didn't charge back. If you don't revoke the key, I'm not going to charge back my card. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm, but I, uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not part of the problem. However, do I know where my key came from? Was it a legit key? Was it marked for deletion? But they just didn't because they don't want to piss off consumers. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I try not to buy from G2A too often, but sometimes we're buying several of one game, and yeah. I well, ten well, ten dollars well, means well, I save yeah. fifty when we're buying five copies or something. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I can understand it, but I mean you're still basically feeding the system. Like if people are using G2A, even if they get the legit keys, the site keeps running. Like, I get obviously the the appeal of it, like of buying there, and I'm not judging anyone for doing it, I'm just saying it's not me that helping.